Your apple harvest should be timed to provide the best quality fruit for your specified market. While fruit destined for immediate sales and eating can be picked for optimal flavor, fruit destined for long-term storage need to be picked while less mature to prevent the fruit from over-ripening when they finally reach their marketing endpoint. To help determine when your blocks are ready to be harvested for long-term storage, there are a few maturity metrics you or an employee on your farm can test. In this video, we will demonstrate how you can measure fruit firmness, bricks levels, and the starch pattern index to help you key in on your optimal harvest windows. You will need to collect a representative sample of at least 10 apples for each block and variety you're interested in testing. Sampling should be conducted once or twice per week beginning at least three weeks before your expected harvest date. Select trees that are representative of the block in both crop load and tree vigor. Avoid sampling from trees at the ends of rows or from outside rows. Consider tagging your sample trees so you can return to the same trees each week of testing. Sample from different sides of the trees, from areas within easy reach. Avoid sampling from shaded tree interiors as these fruit will likely be less mature. Choose fruit that are of average size and color to get a general idea of the block's maturity, avoiding atypically advanced fruit. An exception might be if you're planning to spot pick a multiple pick variety, in which case, choose fruit of a sufficient color that you would harvest during that first pick. Apples should be tested within 24 hours of when they were sampled to get the most accurate results. Once you have your samples, the first test we would recommend performing is a color rating. Record the percentage of red color development on each fruit. You should also record the background or ground color, as this can be a helpful maturity indicator for a number of varieties. Next, we will conduct a firmness test. Many varieties have recommended minimum firmness ratings for long-term storage. This test is done using a penetrometer. Two commonly used brands include the FEG or the Magnus Taylor. These are generally sold with two different tips. For apples, we use the larger tip, which is 11 millimeters in diameter. Be sure to calibrate your penetrometer when you purchase it. Instructions for how to calibrate should be included with the penetrometer when you buy it. To test your fruit firmness, peel off a section of the apple on the blush side and another section on the opposite. Peel halfway between the calyx end and the stem end. The diameter of the peeled section should be between half and three quarters of an inch. We have found that a mandolin slicer makes this process easy and provides us a uniform cut of the peel. Then place the apple on a stationary hard surface such as a tabletop. Smoothly push the penetrometer into the exposed flesh of the apple. Count two full Mississippi seconds when pushing into the side of the fruit. Continue pushing the penetrometer in until you reach the line of the side of the penetrometer. Record the number, zero out the penetrometer, and repeat on the other side. Repeat this process for each apple and take the average of the measurements for each block. As you take the firmness of each fruit, collect some of the juice from each apple as we'll use it in our next test. The next test we will cover is the bricks measurement, which indicates the percentage of sugars in the fruit. Many varieties also have a recommended minimum bricks as part of their maturity standards. This test is conducted using a refractometer which can also be purchased online. Before using your refractometer, it should be calibrated following company instructions using purified water. To measure bricks, you will use the juice you collected from the apples as you measured pressure. Place a few drops of juice onto the prism of the refractometer and cover the slide. Look into the refractometer while holding it up towards the light source. This reading is measured from the top of the line where the light and dark colors meet. Record the reading to the nearest tenth. Rinse the refractometer surface with water and dry between each use. If you are using a digital refractometer, the device will give you a reading with the push of a button. The final measurement we will cover is the starch pattern index test. As sugar is produced in apple leaves, it is transported to the fruit and stored as starch. This starch is then slowly changed back to sugars during the period of fruit maturation. The slow conversion of starch to sugar can be observed by collecting the fruit and staining the starch in the fruit with an iodine solution. This iodine solution stains starch black, while sugar does not lead to a color change. This leads to a noticeable starch pattern as fruit maturation progresses. There are target starch pattern indexes 
or SPIs for many varieties. To conduct an SPI test, cut each apple in half through its equator, halfway between the stem and calyx end. Place one half of the apple on a tray, cut surface facing up. Dip or spray apples into the iodine solution to evenly wet the cut surface and wait a minute for the iodine to react with the starch granules. Ready-made starch iodine solution can be ordered online through a few vendors and usually ships in gallon containers. The iodine solution is very toxic, so it is best to wear gloves when conducting this test and treated fruit should be properly disposed of so animals cannot ingest them. Once the staining has had a chance to develop, arrange each apple in ascending or descending order according to the percentage of tissue that is stained. Compare the pattern of each stained apple half with the pictures on a starch index chart. A chart for Macintosh can be found in the original maturity publication by Blampede and Silsby, which you can find in the link below. Separate charts have been created for Honeycrisp and Snapdragon, which have their own unique starch staining characteristics. Fruit are generally rated from one to eight. Darker colored, less mature apples will have lower ratings, closer to one. These apples have a higher starch content and are therefore less mature. Choose the picture that most closely represents the pattern of the stained apple half, or the two pictures that bracket the stained apple. If the stained apple is bracketed by two pictures, estimate the starch iodine index to the nearest tenth. For example, if the stained apple is between three and four, but is closer to three than four, it should be recorded as 3.2, 3.3, or 3.4, depending on how close it is to a three. Calculate the average SPI for your black to the nearest tenth of an index number. Once you have performed these tests, you can compare your results to the recommended harvest standards for each variety. Maturity standards are available for some, but not all, apple cultivars. Please note that these values can fluctuate in any given year and are not perfectly correlated to fruit maturity. In addition to following the recommended maturity indices as a rough guide, work closely with your marketer and make sure there is adequate varietal flavor prior to harvesting a block. For additional information on maturity testing, please get in touch with either Mike Baisdow or Dan Donahue.